Ah yes, the moment we've all been waiting for. Time to tear down the eco boom to see exactly what happened. Quite honestly, I do not have a clue what caused this and I was never given an answer. So I guess we're gonna have to dig a little bit deeper than the dealership and Ford was willing to go to see exactly what has happened with this EcoBoost. And I tell you, even though I spent a lot of time ripping this thing out, I am just so tired at this moment. But I need to push on because I want to know. I want to know what happened to this thing and why Ford did not cover it because Let's be real. The possibility it could have been my aftermarket parts, and then there's the possibility it wasn't. So finally tearing this thing down, we can hopefully maybe find that other possibility or something that would allude to a possibility of a defective internal part and not so much caused by a defective aftermarket part. So with that out of the way, I guess let's start getting ripping and tearing into the EcoBoost. Okay, so I guess my first order of business is getting this harness off of here. Um, you know, it kind of snakes around all over the place. Ugh. This gets in the way, so it'd be good just to get it off of here. Get it out of the way, because I'm going to need to access everything that it's in the way of. So, first order of business. You know, this actually reminded me as I'm undoing a lot of these connections. I had actually at one point went around to most of what you can easily get to, such as the connections here to the fuel pump, the ignition coils, cam phasers, uh, all this stuff. The cylinder head temperature sensor, like everything that I could reach to uh, from the engine bay, I went around and undid all of these connectors and uh, cleaned them out. Because what I had discovered, though this was a new car and a new engine, there was dirt and debris and a lot of these not in this side so much, but in this side of a lot of the connectors. And I don't know how they got there because usually these seal up really well. So I'm not sure how that happened, but there was dirt in a lot of these. So while that doesn't make much sense to me, I did go around and cleaned it all out. So you'd be surprised how well I took care of this engine for the most part, considering the videos I've made. I, I did a lot to ensure that this engine was in good running condition. Yeah, and I gotta say the unfortunate part about modern cars is there's stuff everywhere. Ugh, sensors and whatnot to make everything run. Oh, that's annoying. That's tucked behind that bracket there. I'm gonna have to remove just to get to that. Nice. I guess that's the crank sensor. Makes you wonder why they make things such a pain in the ass to service. Hey, there's a socket down here. Did I lose a socket? I don't think I did, but there is one down. Oh, you know what? I think I did lose a socket a long time ago. I think this is it. No wonder I couldn't find it because I got caught behind this bracket. Well, that's cool. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Man, there's little clips and things everywhere. That's why I'm taking this. Nice. That's why I'm taking this video here. It's a ground there because this is going to be a reference to everything when I put it back together. Obviously, I'm going to cut down a lot of the footage that you're seeing now, but the full videos for me, you know, coming over here to this side of the engine, I actually just looked at this. This is a cover that goes in here like this, right? Covers up the fuel injectors. But what I thought was interesting, I don't know if this is intentional, but just like it was before I tucked it back in, if you, uh, let's see, if you, you know, pull it out and put it up like that, it covers up all of the intake ports, which I find interesting. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be like that. That was intentional, but still, I find it, I find it interesting. Yeah, there's plugs and stuff all over the place. Good Lord have mercy. Uh, oh, this must be the coolant temperature sensor. It's good to know that that was in the back. Never would have thought to look there. See, learning. Learning's a good thing. This is something else I find interesting. These little clips back here, there's two of them. One here, one here. Quite honestly, I don't know what they go to. But I find it interesting because they taped, with electrical tape, 
This was done at the factory, I would imagine. The harness, see how that's like taped to the clip like that? Sideways? Interesting. Uh, you know what these are? These are probably individual cam position sensors. Now looking at it. <laughs> All right, we're we're getting there. We're getting there. I think mainly it's gonna get that crank position sensor and the injectors. Okay, here's oil pressure. Hey, come on, ouch! I hurt my finger, so it's like really painful to posi uh, position it in some ways. There we go. There's that. Beautiful. That's undone. Wonderful. Okay. Knock sensor. Is there two knock sensors on this? Oh, let's see, we got knock sensor there. There is two knock sensors on this. Wow. I did not know that. That's interesting. It's interesting because the SHO only had, or did it have two? But they were in the center. I don't remember. Was it two? Yeah, okay, maybe it was two. <laughs> I'm thinking it only had one. But I think it had two as well. Okay, so there's the knock sensors. That's good to know that they're on this side of the engine block. I didn't even know that. So anything over here that could be loose or rattling would not be good because, you know, false knock. Okay, fuel rails. Let's see, how do we get these off? Never never seen these kind of clips before. I swear this, this whole car has like a hundred different type of clips. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, that was... Uh, I guess that was the fuel rail pressure sensor, not the injectors. Okay, injector harness is separate from the main engine harness. That's interesting. Okay, I think the rest of it's just over here. I got this, I got a ground here. So I'll make sure I document that. There's a ground right here. And then I got the crank position down here. I was getting the side bracket off. The, uh... Oh, there it goes. It's really annoying that that's how Ford did it. I mean, just think. I don't know. You'd... Do you, do you have to pull the whole engine just to change out a crank position sensor? That sounds like a big job to have to undo all that. This bracket's what the AC compressor bolts to. And that means you'd have to remove the AC compressor to remove this bracket to get to this. Unless you can get to it without removing it. I mean, I guess you could. Dude, I'm telling you, this thing's really stuck on there. Oh, ah, oh, oh God. Oh, I sustained another injury. Oh, wow, that was really stuck in there. That was a bit annoying, honestly. All right, got that ground right there. That's that. Honestly, I think that's it for the engine harness. Yep, there it is. In all of its annoying plastic glory. <laughs> so I think now that we got that wiring harness out of the way, we're gonna start working on removing some of these hoses and tubes and stuff that go all over the place, so. All right, there's one, two, there, fuel feed. Oh, that had a little fuel in it still. No, now it's all out on my shoe. Nice. Oh, gas fumes. Ah, oh, yeah, that's the good stuff. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Woo! High pressure line. There it is. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, let's see. Got this little coolant. Uh, Lock back here. Ooh, there's a gasket in there. And now there isn't. Oh, that's where that goes. I never realized that the coolant lines to the turbo come off of that. That's what these, I thought these were oil lines. <laughs> They're coolant lines to the turbo. Wow, look at me go. Still, uh, I guess that's why putting this foil on here helped with temps because the car stayed cooler because the turbo wasn't superheating the coolant as it was going by. 
So that's good to know. Actually putting this all back together, I might really wrap these up tight because that helped a lot. It really did. And this is the oil line. Here's the feed. That's the return. They will get covered in foil too because this gets really hot and you don't want coolant or oil hot or too hot at least. Now, let's see, it looks like a little bolt there that holds these in. Okay, this a little Torx bit over here on this. I'm that in it. Over here, we got it. Uh, yes, T30. Where did that one go? That's a big Allen head bolt. Holy crap. Man, there's things going everywhere. You know, and I happen to have just the right size. This is like the only socket like this I have, and I don't know where I got it from, but it just so happens to be the right size. Perhaps I've done, I've messed with these kind of fittings before, and that's why I have this, and I just don't remember. But I'm not complaining because I can, uh, you know, I can do what I gotta do. Oh, oh God, I snapped the damn camera's neck. Oh, looks like we're gonna make a mess here. Uh, need a rag. Need a rag. There we go. Need a rag. What do these call these type of fittings? Banjo fittings or whatever? Oh, it's peeing really good. Maybe I should get something more than just a rag because that doesn't look like it's gonna help. There we go. Now we're thinking with our noodle. Okay, there's that. And this. This should come off now. Oh, there it goes. Try to take it off in one piece. Yeah! That's what we're talking about. Okay, get this line up here. Oh, I gotta tell you, these are a pain in the ass. Holy crap. All right, so I think I'm gonna go ahead now and remove high pressure fuel pump. All right. There's that. This vacuum pump here. here before I drain the oil so I can get the fuel rail off and the injectors out hopefully and probably gonna need something to pry so I have a feeling these are not gonna come out easy oh okay two of the four came out that's nice I need a dry towel Ooh. Uh. <laughs> Everywhere I go to grab a towel, I just realize it's soaked in something. This one's dry. Hey, come on out of there. Come on. Okay. That one's out. Oh. And then, oh, come on. Here comes cylinder four. Come on. There you go. I don't think we have problems with those. They'll be reusable unless I hit the ladder and go full XDI E85. Yeah, keep dreaming, Kirk. Keep dreaming. So now I have most of the wiring harness off except this little bit here for the boost solenoid, but that's not in the wiring, it's more or less just the solenoid in the lines to the turbo. Ah, uh, but before I pull the turbo, I'm gonna drain the oil. So that is what we're gonna do next. And we'll see if there's any, uh, you know, surprises in there. You know when you have a party and everyone leaves and they leave trash everywhere? Well, the party was in there and the trash was likely left down here. So we're gonna go ahead and see what kind of trash uh, the party goers left over. Okie dokie. I'm of truth. Time to see what is going on here in the oiling department. Now I really should be doing this with two hands because I need to hold this funnel. So I can like direct the oil into the pan here because it's like in a weird angle. So I'm like holding the funnel, holding the camera, trying not to spill oil everywhere, which I'm probably going to do. Oh, uh, I mean, I got a little bit on the GoPro, but that's better than all of it on the floor. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, I mean, so far, don't look too bad. It looks like oil. There are chunks coming out of it that I can see, but 
If there's anything, it could be left in the bottom of the pan or you just can't see it all mixed up in the oil there. Okay, I don't know why the damn oil filter was on there so tight I had to like really fight with it. Unless someone has been in here and I just don't know it. I use at the dealership. Oh, I didn't mean to do <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> well, this is great. I mean, okay, so the good thing is I don't see any visible chunks, but then again, until I get the pan off, that's not going to be easy to determine. But nothing looks like it really came out with the oil. I don't know what's an oil filter. I'm not sure if I'm interested in checking because I don't know what oil filter opener tool costs, but maybe I'll look into it, I don't know. That should also help reduce some of the weight on the engine here so I can get to more of the uh, components. A lot done. I mean, realistically, there's still a lot more to go um, until we get to actually taking the head off and everything. But I'm actually gonna save that for the next video. I know what you're thinking, like, oh man, don't do this on Blue Balls Us Kirk. I'm sorry. Uh, two reasons for that. A, I've already filled up a lot of the card on the camera here. So that means I've recorded a lot. It's a pretty big card. I like to keep the length of my videos reasonable. I don't want them too long. So now that we got all of that out of the way, in the next video, of course, we're gonna finish pulling off all the other bolts and accessories and getting the oil pan off and getting the cylinder head off because they're the two big things. And then depending on how far I get with that video, there could be even a third video with tearing down all of the rods, checking all of the cams and everything, all the bearings. So I wanna keep this part of the whole thing more in depth because this is kind of what more or less everyone's interested in anyway. So I need to break it up. You get it, right? So definitely keep a lookout for that video. But with that said, I think that's gonna wrap it up here for this video. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with everyone you know if you wanna see more content like this and haven't already, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, keep a lookout for the next Cars Creative video.